Lecture 6, Basic Descriptive Statistics, Shape of a Distribution. So, having looked at measures of dispersion, it's useful to actually consider the shape of a distribution. So we had a look at things like variance, range and standard deviation. And one of the important things to understand about things like variance and standard deviation is to understand how your data is actually shaped. This helps to almost bring to life what we mean by standard deviation and variance. And so it's really important to be able to visualize and see what the shape of your data what the shape of your data actually looks like. Standard deviation itself is a really important statistic if you're looking at a normal distribution. And we're going to have a look at what we mean by a normal distribution in a moment. But if your distribution shows more values that are that are towards the top than the bottom, then a median might end up being more helpful. So we're going to have a look at what we mean by a normal distribution within the next few slides. And really, why is it that we need to know about these things? Well, if we think about our discussion that we had on means and extreme values, so the fact that we had a look at um, a number of people's heights and we found that there was one person at the very uh, that had a very that was very tall that was actually pulling up the mean value if we took them out the mean value dropped. Now if standard deviation is based on the mean where data has extreme values i.e. very near the bottom or very near the top of the data set then the mean can be very much affected by these extreme values and so sometimes a median becomes more important to look at. Now there are two measures that we use to indicate the shape of a distribution and don't forget that at this stage we are looking at interval or ratio variables. Okay, so just in the same way, so when we were looking at um, at our range, our variance and our standard deviation, the fact was we could only calculate those if we're thinking about a mathematical calculation. We could only do that with values that enable us to, to generate some numerical and mathematical data. With nominal and ordinal variables, this isn't the case. So really, when we're thinking about this, we're really only thinking about data that uses a numeric value. Now, the two measures that we use to indicate the shape of a distribution are what we call skewness and kurtosis. And the shape of a distribution itself is when it's presented in the form of a histogram or a trend line and when, plot when plotted on a line graph. And we're going to talk a bit more about these ways of presenting data in the next few um, slide series. So if we start off first by what we mean by a normal distribution, let's start by understanding what this looks like. So if all values in a data set are equally distributed, then its shape is going to be symmetrical. Now, why is this useful? for statistical analysis. Well, we know that if data is normally distributed, i.e. in the shape that you see on the slide, so we have a, what we call sort of a bell-shaped curve, okay, with the mean value sitting right in the middle. If our data is normally distributed, then our mean equals our mode equals our median so they all end up equaling each other. 50% of cases lie above the mean, the midpoint of the mean, and 50% of cases lie below the midpoint of the mean. So it's perfectly evenly distributed, they're perfectly symmetrical, and one side looks like another if you were to flip them over. Okay, so that's what we think about when we think about a normal distribution. That's what a normal distribution looks like. Now in our first measure of, of understanding our shape of our distribution, we start by thinking about the skewness of a distribution. So if the observations that we gather in a data set have a greater number of values at either the high end or the low end of the distribution, 
then the distribution is going to become skewed. So the shape is going to become skewed. Calculating the skewness of our distribution helps to indicate the position of the lower and higher values in a data set which pull the shape of a distribution either towards the lower or the higher end. If the data has um, a very large number of low values then the shape will be positively skewed and if the data has a large number of high values then the shape will become negatively skewed and we're going to have a look at a couple of examples in the next two slides. In this example we can have a look at what a normal distribution would look like. So this is what, what a normal distribution looks like here. If we take, if we take an example where um, if a class did an exam and the majority did very well, then the result would be a negatively skewed distribution, as you can see here. In this case, most people's exam scores would be amongst the highest values. However, there is a minority that did poorly and these extreme values or those that go against the majority have an effect on the mean. The mean ends up being pulled in the direction of the extreme scores okay, and it starts to negatively skew the distribution. The extreme scores are smaller therefore the mean is smaller than the median. If we have a look at this example, so again we start off with our normal distribution this is what things would look like normally if they were distributed. But if we had an example where a class did an exam and the majority of people did poorly, then the result would be what we call a positively skewed distribution. So most people's exam scores would be amongst the lowest values. However, there would be a minority that did well and these extreme values, or those that go against the majority who got low scores, have an effect on the mean. The mean ends up being pulled in the direction of the extreme scores and in this example we would end up with a positively skewed distribution with the extreme scores being larger, therefore the mean being larger than the median. We often find that having a look at a histogram, okay, histograms are often used to look at the distribution of data but we do also sometimes use things like box plots so we can actually see uh, the extreme values more clearly and we're going to talk about more ways of presenting data in the next series of slides. We're going to have a look at histograms, we're going to have a look at box plots as well. Now kurtosis is the second way that we measure our distribution of our data. Kurtosis has a look at how the values in our data set are distributed around the mode. Now the mode, recapping from earlier, the mode is the most frequently occurring value in a distribution of scores. Now there are a number of different types of kurtosis. We have um, positive kurtosis, so that's where things look a little peaky. Um, we have negative kurtosis and that's where our distribution of our data looks very flat and if things are evenly distributed we have um, it's mesokurtic and we're going to have a look at some examples of these. So in this example here we can see an example of what we mean by positive kurtosis. You can see that the shape of the distribution looks like a, looks like a mountain, it's very peaky. And in this case, the values are very tightly clustered around the mode. So the mode being the value that, it, that occurs most frequently. Okay, so that means in this case, our values are very tightly clustered around the mode. And the more tightly clustered those values are, the more pointed or peaky the shape of the distribution. In this example, we have an example of negative kurtosis, or this is where things look very flat. So in this case, the values are very loosely clustered around the mode, so the distribution of the data is really relatively flat and very wide. The less tightly clustered our values are, the more flat and wide the shape of the distribution becomes. So as a summary of what we've started to understand about the distribution of data, if we're going to understand the distribution of our variables, we need to do a number of different things. 
we need to first off have a look at the shape of the distribution by looking at either, say, for example, a histogram or a line graph and having a look at a trend, plotting a trend line. And we're going to have a look at those two things later on in a, in a further lecture series on presenting data. So having examined the shape of the distribution, given that shape, examining that data with the most suitable method. So picking up on the things that we have looked at earlier around mode, mean and median, and then having a look at our, um, our measures of range, standard deviation and variance. And then having examined the data with our most suitable methods, okay, depending on whether it's nominal, ordinal or scale data, we then need to go about examining how far away the data is from a normal distribution. So that's having a look at um, kurtosis and skewness. These different elements of evidence together help us to build a really good picture, a really good understanding of what our variable looks like and how it's distributed.